Good morning. <clears throat> I'm Bob Dunster, the chair of Chalmers Castle Downs Church, and I'm glad to welcome you this morning. I have a few items of information that I'd like to share. This morning, we have members from Athabasca United Church joining us virtually under the auspices of their minister, Monica Rossborough. She's not leading their service this morning as she is away and has recommended that they all join us to celebrate virtually as we do that every Sunday live and welcome to all of you. The second item is a sad one. Mary Jane Spolosky, a member of our congregation who Christian and others have kept in touch with, passed away on January 23rd at Dr. Zetter Care Facility. We've heard her mentioned in prayers at our service. Please continue to remember in her in your prayers. She will be missed. The third item, we have decided to hold the annual congregation meeting, February 28, 2021, following a virtual service. It will be done using meeting software, the Zoom product and will be an abbreviated version as recommended by the Regional Council. It will require your cooperation as all the members and adherents who join the meeting will be asked to identify themselves when they lock in, log in. This will allow the chair and the secretary of the meeting to determine when we have a quorum and who is, to, who is in attendance and able to vote. The meeting agenda and other documents will be sent by mail, by email to you or by Canada Post if you do not have the use of a computer. Zoom software will accommodate identifying those who wish to ask questions and also document votes on motions presented. We welcome your participation. And if you have questions, please contact me at dunster at shaw.ca. Thank you for joining us this morning. Keep warm and safe. Good morning, people of God. We are in the month of February, and I believe most of us have already heard that this month marks Black History Month, but it also marks a couple of other things, such as Heart and Stroke Month. We need to remember that we are all called not to just celebrate this Black History Month that we have come to call with our sisters and brothers of the African descent, we are also called to stand in solidarity with those who have been affected by different kinds of heart disease and even strokes. The other thing that I wanted to bring up is that this month of February also marks what I have come to learn as Marfan Syndrome Awareness Month. What is this syndrome? I have come to learn that Marfan Syndrome is a life-threatening genetic condition that most commonly affect the bodies 
connective tissue. It can affect our heart, our eyes, even our skeletons, actually. About one in 5,000 people have this condition. And this condition affects all people of all social, racial, and you can name it, background. But by God's grace, I'm sure we'll work together to stand in solidarity with everybody. And that's why I'm now going to call upon all of you to join me in these responsive centering words. It is by God's grace that we walk up and gather for worship this morning. And together we say, and it is by God's grace that our lives and the lives of all God's children near and far are changed. And now let us join our hearts together as we sing, come touch our hearts. You there? Who, me? Yes, you. Why are you here? I am here to worship God with you. But you are different from me. Ah, because I look different. The same God who made you made me and loves us all regardless of background, gender, culture, or ethnicity. Okay, then come. Let us worship the one true God who made us and embraces all equally.
Creator God of love, peace, and unity, we thank you for welcoming us all just as we are, for making us equal as your children from all corners of the earth, for giving us your blessing as your children, and for making us belong in this world house you so love. We pray that you strengthen our faith and help us to see each other through your eyes so that we will be able to experience and glorify you in more ways than one. Guide our worship this hour. May we be open and sensitive to each other's needs and presence, realizing that we are all tied in a single garment of destiny and called to bring peace to all your creation as one people who belong to you and you alone. God in community, holy in one, we come to you as your children, paving, praying as Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. First reading today is from Psalm 103, verses 1 to 9 and 20 to 22. Thanksgiving for God's goodness. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, 
so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord and all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Our second reading is from Hebrews 4, verses 12 to 16. The word of God is active, alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirits, joint and marrow. It judges the thought and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize, empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Here ends the reading. My sisters, bless the Lord. My sisters, bless the Lord. My sisters, bless the Lord. There is no As always, I would like to begin uh, with uh, something funny. And here is uh, a story that I got from uh, one of my relations. The story is about a man who went on vacation with his wife and his mother-in-law. And where did they go on vacation? They went to the Holy Land. 
While they were there in the Holy Land, the mother-in-law went to be with the Lord. The undertaker told the man or the son-in-law, you can have your mother-in-law shipped home for $5,000 or you can bury her here in the Holy Land for just $150. The son-in-law thought about it for a moment and then told the undertaker that he would just have his mother-in-law shipped back home. The undertaker did not understand what was going on. So he asked the man, why would you spend $5,000 to ship your mother-in-law home when it would be wonderful to have her buried right here in the holy land and spend only $150? The man replied by saying, well, a man died here in the Holy Land 2,000 years ago. He was buried here. And three days later, guess what happened? He rose from the dead. I just can't take that chance. <laughs> Praise the Lord for this man. Let us uh, pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for this wonderful time that you have given us. We praise your name and we worship you because you are always with us. And last night we were in our bed just like people who could not come back to life. But by your grace, you took care of us like a mother rocking her children. And here we are this morning with the gift of life, pumped into our hearts, our bodies. We are grateful, despite the fact that some of us might not be feeling well, but by your grace, we have faith that you are with us and you will continue to be with us. And now we pray that you may be with us, O oh God, as we reflect on your word. Our reflection for this morning is uh, titled Singing Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. And this reflection is based mainly on uh, the passage we just read from Hebrews. But just one verse. We read verses 12 to 16, but we are going to be reflecting on just Verse 16, which says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. So that we, who is we here, may receive mercy and find grace to help us. Who is included in us? In our time of need. I would like to invite uh, you all to listen to something that Terry is going to play. And after that, we are going to have a quiz.
Do we know who wrote that song? I'm sure you were singing in your heart or in your house, in silence or even loudly, as I was singing in my heart. Who wrote that song? Anybody here? I heard John, a man by the name of John Newton, who was born in 1725 and went to be with the Lord in 1807. And if you'd ask many people today, they would tell you that John Newton was an English Anglican minister and an abolitionist, somebody who fought so that there could be an end to slave trade. But here's the next question. Next question. What did John Newton do before he became a minister, before he became a Christian, and before he even started advocating for the end of slave trade? What did he do? He was a slave trader. And to be specific, John Newton was a captain of slave ships. Not just one, but many, many ships. He was a captain of slave ships. Many believe that one day, as John Newton was going about doing his business of enslaving people from the African continent, taking them from there to other places in order to sell them. One day, as he was doing just that, he heard something. He heard a melody that sounds like a lyricless, a wordless African spiritual an African prayerful solo chant that was coming right from the belly of his ship. And who was hammering that melody? Slaves. The people who were in chains and they were just down there. Mm -hmm. The slaves were singing and singing. And after hearing this African or slave melody, John Newton was touched. And later on, we learn he was inspired to write the words of what has come to be known as Amazing Grace. And he originally wrote verses 1 to 4. Verse Five, which is found in our hymnal books, was written by somebody else by the name of John P. Rees. So John Newton was inspired later on in his life by a slave, prayerful, sorrow chant. And he wrote the words of amazing grace and said his words to a slave tune. The slaves 
Oh, perhaps we should now say, our brothers and sisters, that John, John's ship was carrying on that day when he heard that melody, were hurting. They were hopeless. There was nobody they could turn to at that time. But we learned that in the midst of their hurt and hopelessness, they made the decision to answer the invitation of their maker, the invitation of our maker through their sorrow chant. And that is the invitation we hear in the letter. To the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 16. I can picture the slaves in that belly of that ship saying, Let us right now approach the throne of God's grace boldly because we have nobody to turn to except our Maker. So that we, but here's the question, who is included in this we? I would like to believe that these slaves were saying so that we, the slaves and the slave traders, so that we and John Newton and everybody up there, so that we, the abused and the abuser, so that we, the victim and the offenders, so that we, the just and the unjust, so that we, the young and the old, may receive mercy that flows from the river of our Creator, God, and find grace. To do what? To help us. Grace is not just a passive thing. It's a very active and radical thing. So that we may find grace to help us. Not just us who are down here in chains. But also those who are out there because they are in chains. Whatever affects us directly down here affects them too indirectly up there because we are all caught in what Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King once called in an inescapable network of mutuality. The slaves sought help from God. They sought help from God's throne of grace. In other words, they were able to immerse themselves in the pool of God's grace in a time when everything seemed hopeless, in a time when they were in chains. And as a result of their approach to God's throne, they were able to serve as life-changing agents of the same pool of grace that God had made available to them. They became life-changing agents to John Newton, who was right above them. And John was able to realize that by enslaving, by dehumanizing, by disrespecting, by abusing other people who bear the same image of God that he bore, he indirectly abused himself. He indirectly enslaved himself. He indirectly tarnished the image of God that we all share.
John Newton realized that he was not going to be free until all those who were in bondage as a result of his words and deeds became free. John Newton realized, just like we sang last week, for everyone born a place at the table to live without fear and simply to be, to work, to speak out, to witness and worship for everyone born the right to be free. And later on, John Newton would say these words in the first verse of the hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, or surprising grace. Amazing also means surprising, miraculous. He never expected to realize one day that he wasn't free. Even though in the eyes of all other people who had a lot of money, he was free. But in there, he wasn't happy at all. So surprising grace. How sweet the sound. The sound that came from people who were not eating sugar. People who had no water to drink. But the sound came from there. What kind of sound? A sound that saved a wretch like him. That English word means victim. It also means a sufferer. In other words, he's saying to us that I was suffering without knowing it, but by God's grace, a song came to me through people who I thought were inferior to me. And they realized that I was lost. But through that sound, I was found. Because of that sound of grace, I realized that I was blind and the grace of God helped me see. John wrote these words and tried to live them out in his life. And we could say that together, John and the slaves who composed the melody that he used, have come to lead countless people all over the world, including you and me, to that throne that is full of God's grace. And I would like to believe, oh, I should say, I do believe that God, through God's grace, love and mercy, made it possible for the song Amazing Grace to be written just the way it was written. Why? So that we, you, and me, would be reminded that as God's children, we are all connected in God's sight. We are all connected by God's amazing grace. Regardless of ability, age, social class, ethnicity, and the list goes on and on. We are all notes or keys on a piano that belongs to God, our maker. For us to be able to understand this last part, where I say we are all keys on the piano, I would like to bring up something, a song called Ebony and Ivory that came out in 1982. And I was introduced to this song by Bruce through Terry early last year on the 14th of January, 2020. And in this song, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder have this to say to all of us, ebony and ivory, 
live together in perfect harmony, side by side, not fighting. On my piano keyboard, even this morning while Teddy was playing, I, never, I did not hear the note saying, oh, I want me myself to be heard. Or they were fighting or called the, calling the police on each other. Oh Lord, why don't we? We, not I, we all know that people are the same wherever you go. There is good and bad in everyone. We learn to live when we learn to give each other what we need to survive together alive. Not alone, but together alive. I hope by now you are able to understand what I just said. When I said, we are all keys. We are all simple, but precious. Simple or ordinary, but priceless keys on God's piano. Unlike the keys on our organs, on our keyboards, on our pianos, we are gifted with the power, with the ability to choose, to act, to influence. And we are all invited to daily approach God's throne of grace and let God play and sing amazing grace through the way we live our lives. Amazing grace.
it was by God's grace that the whole creation came into being. We were all on God's mind and God said, you know what? It's good for us to be with others. And by God's grace, we were all created. Even though we're all created, we started fighting, doing different things and trying not to live by the standard of the image in which we were all created. And God say, oh no, I love these people and I am full of grace. Let me just move into their neighborhood. Let me move into their homes and into their heart. And Jesus came to live with us. And what happened? He was not well received by everybody. Even his own disciples felt like they should not believe in everything. They were with Jesus, but when the time came for Jesus to face the cross, Jesus asked them if they would walk by his side. They said yes, but in their heart they were saying no. And Jesus knew that but on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he invited them to the table of grace. He said, there is room for everybody. I am the victim here, but you guys will betray me. You are offenders, but we are all equal in God's sight. Just come and be transformed to his table. And on that night, Jesus looked at all of them with love and full of grace, he took bread. He gave thanks to God, our maker, broke it and gave it to all of them. And through them, he gave it to us and said, by God's grace, we have this bread that is broken. And the bread is Jesus. He said to them, I am breaking my blood for you because... I am gracious. And whenever you do this, remember to become the bread of grace to others. And then when the supper was over, Jesus took cup of salvation, the cup of wine, gave thanks to God, the maker of everything, and gave it to his friend around the table of grace, and say, this is the cup of salvation. It's full of grace. And whenever you drink from this cup, become cups of grace to others. Oh God, you are full of love, full of grace. We thank you for creating us in your image. We thank you for offering us your love, and we thank you for being that grace that moves around us, that pool of grace that comes to us in our time of need. And Jesus has given us himself, and we ask that as we partake, as we celebrate his presence among us, and partake at this table of Jesus Christ, May we be transformed so that we can become agent of your grace, O oh God. Thank you. May you pour out your Holy Spirit on our element that are gathered here in this place and scattered beyond this sanctuary. And help us to become your body. In your name, we pray and say, Amen. And now, I would like to invite you, wherever you are, we are all united through the Spirit of God, and we are one by God's power and God's grace. And now we may partake.
resourceful and gracious God, your saving and sustaining gifts to us are diverse and many. In gratitude for all you have given us, we ask that you give other our abilities, our hearts, our very lives, and use them for your work of reconciliation, grace, and hope for all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we join our voices together in God's blessing, I would like to just express our gratitude to our relatives, our siblings from Athabasca United Church and Reverend Monica Rosborough for blessing us with their graceful presence this morning. May God bless you. I know you are sitting somewhere in the pews of this uh, special and wonderful sanctuary that we call a virtual sanctuary. You can wave and I'm sure, I'm I'm sure other people will be able to see you all. And as always, after this service, we are going to be uh, allowing you to unmute yourselves so that you could fellowship with uh, one another. God sends us forth into the world. So we'll go to treat each person with dignity and respect. Jesus calls us to serve everyone we meet. So we'll proclaim the priceless worth of each person. The Holy Spirit fills us with grace so we may breathe new life into the fainted heart and stand with others searching for God's justice in their lives. Let us go forth in peace and be of good courage, holding fast that which is good, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, 
rendering to no one evil for evil and rejoicing in the amazing saving grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And together we say, Amen. Happy Sunday to all of us. The journey is long, so let us walk together. Sure. 